It's been a heck of a roller coaster ride for the federal NDP over the past few years. Since the death in 2011 of Jack Layton, its most successful leader yet, the party managed to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory in the last federal election and subsequently turfed leader Thomas Mulcair, who many blamed for the disappointing showing in 2015. Now, in an unexpected burst of first ballot power, a dapper young MPP from Ontario has swooped in to take the helm. The first time since the 1940s that an Ontario provincial politician has won the leadership of a national party. It's now Jugmeet Singh's NDP, and we're wondering what that means to the future of the traditionally third-place party. Let's ask Sherry DeNovo, the soon-to-be former provincial member for Parkdale High Park. Peggy Nash, visiting professor at Ryerson University and the former federal member for Parkdale High Park. Rick Smith, executive director of the Broadbent Institute. Hadia Rodrigue, co-host of the podcast Canada Land Commons. And Brittany Andrew Amofa, public affairs commentator on race, class and gender in Canadian politics. And we're delighted to welcome you five to our Little table here this evening at TVO. Good to be here. West End of Hi, Toronto, guys. well represented, obviously. <laughs> Couldn't find anybody outside Parkdale High Park, I guess, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, kidding. Lovely to have you all here. As you may have heard, there is some news. Uh, one of Canada's mainline parties for the first time ever really? has a non-white leader. Yes, this just in. Uh, <laughs> shall we see a little bit of Jagmeet Singh in action, proclaiming victory? Sheldon, roll it, please. From Tommy to David, Ed, Audrey, Alexa, Jack, and Tom, and today to all of us, we are the party that is building a better Canada. It is us. And it is in us. And it is in us that you can see the future of our country, how great our country will be with a new democratic government. Jagmeet Singh's victory speech. Let's now, Sheldon, bring up the results because it only took one ballot. A lot of people thought it would go longer, but there he did. Look at the number on the right-hand side. He got more than 50% of the votes on the first ballot. Charlie Angus, Nikki Ashton, Guy Caron, all much further back than any of them had anticipated. Let's get going here. Peggy Nash. How surprised are you that Singh got it and won? Well, the Singh camp seemed pretty confident. I was there that Sunday, and they had a lot of confidence. But still, when the numbers were read, uh, you could see the surprise and the joy that was expressed. So, I, uh, you know, that's how Jack Layton won when he became leader, and it just gets the party on a great footing. It just resets everything. You sat with him in caucus. So you maybe know him a little better than the rest of us around this table. Yes, quite well. And it was a jugmeat juggernaut of a campaign, <laughs> uh, a phenomenal organized. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it was a, a phenomenal organizational effort. And, uh, and right from the beginning, right from the beginning, his team was saying, we're going to win this. And it seemed pretty cocky at the time, but obviously they were right. What do you think the one ballot victory suggests? I think it suggests that the NDP definitely wants to go in a new direction with the party. And they definitely want to attract racialized voters. They want to expand the suburban vote, um, their vote in urban cities. And what Peggy Nash had mentioned in terms of even though the campaign knew that they were probably going to win, but there was still some, uh, some excitement there, was because it was a hard campaign, right? There was a lot of hurdles that the Jagmeet Singh um, campaign had to face along so the way. Long. It was a long campaign. Um, there was a lot of challenges. There was a lot of, you know, sometimes tension between the campaigns. Candidate. So I think it, it's kind of a breath of fresh air, you know, when you win such such a huge race like this. Hadia, your view on the overwhelming nature of his victory? I think it's inspiring. So when I spoke to him a few weeks ago, I was afraid. I was afraid that Canada wasn't ready for someone who wasn't a white man. And it's nice and refreshing to see that it seems like we are. Mm -hmm. I wonder whether we have to revisit that thing. I mean, there is an openly gay grandmother who is the Premier of Ontario. We have a gay Premier in Prince Edward Island. Uh, we now have uh, a South Asian leading a major political party. Maybe we're readier than a lot of folks think we are. I mean, if you look at the U.S., right, we thought we were ready for the first female president, and, you know, That was a more complicated question. Out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes I, you know, I want to think the best in people, but I am a black woman who has lived a black female life, 
And so I know the reality can sometimes be different. Mm -hmm. Rick, uh, you're not a black woman. You have not lived a black female life. You I'm want to a, tell us about I'm what a, a six foot six uh, white man, you know, straight white guy. Exactly. And, uh, and I, it may this may shock you, but I'm not the most uh, emotional guy in the world. And you can see, you, you cut a little clip of uh, uh, my my two sons and my wife and I at the back of that room last Sunday. Uh, and I I was really emotional when he won, mm -hmm. and uh, I gave my sons a big hug. Uh, I think they were kind of shocked. Like my my little guy was kind of tugging on my sleeve. I'm, I'm not sure he's ever seen me cry before, to be mm -hmm. honest. And it was a wonderful moment. And I think my kids will remember that moment for the rest of their lives. And uh, I'm really proud. I'm proud of uh, the NDP for, for making that convincing choice. Uh, I'm delighted for my friends uh, in the Jagmeet Singh camp and for the other, uh, for the other great uh, uh, candidates. Who was around it was a wonderful, him, wonderful moment. All, all those yeah. young people, um, the diversity of the folks who were sitting with him and the people who yeah. came up on stage. And he talked about this is the future of Canada. And yeah. just demographically, it's the future of Canada. Yeah. So I, I thought it was a very powerful statement. Absolutely. Yeah. Just to add on to that, I think there's going to be a whole new generation of political leaders that are going to come after this. I know just speaking to a lot of people who are looking to run in the provincial election um, upcoming, people who are now looking to be political active are young, racialized people who are partly now involved in party politics because of Jagmeet. So I think what's really important for us to recognize is what this is doing to transform or shift the Canadian political climate and who can actually be involved or who can actually participate and be seen as a front figure within politics. Well, my job is to play killjoy at this part because, Sherry, <laughs> um, you know from being in politics as long as you have, he's never going to be more popular or have a better day in politics than the one he just experienced. Mm -hmm. But now comes the heavy lifting. And when you find out, you know, if I can torture another metaphor here, when the rubber hits the road, and what you really got to do to succeed in politics, uh, how much of that bloom is going to come off the rose? Well, first of all, uh, you know, Trudeau is now the oldest leader of a political party. So that's... Major the, political party. So, yeah, so Jagmeet has a lot of time on his side, mm. and I think that's important. Uh, he also has a really re-energized party that's going to keep his feet to the fire from within, as well as a media, a world media, that's really scrutinizing mm. him from the outside. So mm. uh, I think, you know, he's an anomaly um, uh, on, on the world stage, not just in Canadian politics. And I think that's really exciting. I mean, we yes, we elected a person who's racialized, person who's non-Christian, and I think that's really important. This is really representative of multicultural Canada, finally, um, and, and and really a beacon for the world. So it's, it's going to be exciting. Um, and, you know, he's got a lot of time. He's a young guy. He's 38 young guy. years old. Mm -hmm. young guy. I do wonder, though, whether, I mean, you, you, you are not wrong to point out in the past that somebody's gender or ethnicity may have made them in the eyes of many Canadians, unsuitable for office. Is this one of those examples where his ethnicity, his background, was actually a huge asset, as it turns out to be? I mean, I would think it was an asset with the racialized communities. You know, I'm skeptical. I still believe in racism as a, as a concept that exists, so I don't know how much it played into a non-minority um, voting, but I think it's... I mean, I was inspired. I started playing my mayoral campaign after he won. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, just, just, uh, didn't know that. What, what, what are we running for? I would run for mayor of Toronto eventually. Eventually. So. Eventually. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So not against John Tory next time. No. He'll be glad to hear that. I think. <laughs> okay. What do you, do you think his background was it was a, a as opposed to a detriment as it may have been in the past an asset this time? You know, he's, uh, his team was so skilled at positioning him and so skilled at social media. Um, but I also think he's, he's got a personality that uh, is, is warm and that reaches out to people. And I, while, yes, obviously, he, he reached out to millennials, he reached out to people from racialized communities, there was a lot of other people who voted for him, and that's how he won. But, you know, I, I mean, we saw how the media treated him from day one. You Which know, is the, how? Well, the polling about whether someone who wears a turban can be elected, you know, asking him to be accountable for a terrorist uh, event that happened when he was six years old. And I wondered whether someone would be held accountable uh, for uh, for their religion, you know, who's a practicing Catholic, hmm. or, I have an or, Irish or, I'm or, not, or yeah, yeah well, for what happened there. in Northern yeah. Ireland, yeah. and I, I just think yeah. that I, I found that 
really disconcerting. You know, we've got these, we were, I was going to go to this later, but since you brought it up, let's go to it here. Because there was an Angus Reid poll done. There he is. Is, a Canadian, is Canada ready for a sick prime minister? Mm -hmm. And again, on pronunciation, I think most of us say Sikh, but I'm told Sikh is actually the proper pronunciation. Learning um, Here's the, yeah, here's the, there you go. Here's the question. Uh, would you consider voting for a political party led by a sick man who wears a turban and carries a kirpan, that ceremonial dagger? That was the question Angus Reid asked. And you can see the numbers. I mean, overwhelming numbers of Canadians by about a two-to-one margin in almost every province say no sweat. Uh, I do note the numbers in Quebec are a lot tighter. And um, Sherry, I wonder what you infer from that. Well, it, this very good news, I think, and, and Peggy's absolutely right. He was met with racism from the get-go, and it's not going to stop. Racism is real, um, and we still live in a racially divided country, whether we want to admit it or not, in terms of the power structure. So this is going to be one of the challenges he faces. But I think what that poll shows you is that, and it was interesting, because Canadians thought other people would be racist, but not them, right? Yeah. It was very interesting. So I really, I think we've embraced multiculturalism, not as much as we should, but we are moving the distance. And, and, and that's what's so exciting about this, is that uh, it's kind of a reflection on all of us, how well he does and how he's met, um, uh, not just him. Well, but I hasten to add, Rick, the yeah. numbers are close in Quebec. They aren't in any other province, but in Quebec there is still some concern about that. You know, my hunch is, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a former Anglophone Montrealer, so I'm you know, my family comes from there. I'm kind of steeped in, in the, the, the history of secularism, quote unquote, in Quebec. My hunch is that he is going to do very well in Quebec. I mean, there's a very positive guy. I mean, he's hilarious to spend time with. He's just got this great energy. Uh, he's, he was in Montreal over the weekend. He drew a crowd of several hundred people. He's campaigning in the Lac Saint-Jean by-election. The photos coming out of, out of there are well, hilarious. I mean, hanging out, hang out with yeah. uh, the, can the NDP candidate's mom, who's his uh, biggest uh, new fan. Uh, he's, uh, he's, doing, he's doing a blueberry pie eating contest, which like, is hilarious. Charm, though. Uh, yeah. He's a very charming guy. I, I, my, my, right. His, his uh, Francophone com opponent is now the deputy leader of the party. So that is presumably mm -hmm. a... In his yeah. first yeah. official act, he turned to Guy Caron uh, as his parliamentary leader. Uh, so clearly uh, nodding to the, the importance, the, the, the critical nature of Quebec, of Quebec for the party, for the country. So I think he's going to do very well in Quebec and across the country, and I think he's going to pick up steam. You mm -hmm. wanted to say, Brittany? Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think what's been lost in this conversation is that Quebec has been painted as kind of this beacon of xeno xenophobia. And although, yes, there are some issues in regards to maybe their laws and bills that have been passed, but I think we haven't actually listened to what Jagmeet's experience has been within Quebec. And he has stated that hasn't been his, his experience. He stated it's been quite positive. He said that he's been received with open arms. So I think we really need to listen to those on the ground testimonies, as well as this is what's going to be the key to 2019 as well. The fact that Jamie charms, I guess, people across the country, that he's building relationships, that he's that he's definitely making a connection with voters across the country. I think that's what's really important. I think that's something we need to keep an eye out and how strong he will do in 2019. It's interesting that one of the first things that was said about Justin Trudeau when he became leader of the Liberal Party was that, you know, he's all flash, he's all polished, he's got great emotional connective tissue, if you like, to the people, but he doesn't know anything, and, he's, and he hasn't got any brains. They're saying the same stuff about Jagmeet Singh, too, right? Dapper, looks great, connects with people, but he doesn't know anything. Um, Criminal wanna, lawyer right, had his wanna, own practice. Well, this is what I'm saying, <laughs> you know. Confidence ability to learn things. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, he went to law school. You know, he can read, he can yeah. read he can Bell's read. laws. He can, <laughs> he can figure out what's going on. He, you know, he is uh, an MPP. He has political experience, so he will figure out what to say. He speaks yeah. several languages yeah. he as does, well, which he? is yeah. really important. And, yeah. and I think the other important thing here is his team is phenomenal, and he's re-energized the party. We've got all these new members that you know, are supportive of him. Um, you know, it's a party effort. A leader is not just doesn't just run out and do their own thing, right. and I think that re-energized party um, uh, that really feels, I think, 
its democratic socialist roots and is veering to the left, I hope, um, will actually keep his feet to the fire and he'll learn. Um, and, I, and I think that's so important. Can I just be churlish for a second here? Do I have to remind you you didn't support him at the convention? <laughs> I didn't, well, yes, but you know, here's the thing. Um, I think it's phenomenal that he was elected. He wasn't my first choice, but look at the change in him over the course of the leadership campaign. At first, he was kind of waffling around pipelines. By the end of it, he was against pipelines. You know, things like free tuition, all sorts of issues. You saw Jugmeet already moving to the left on during the course of that leadership campaign. I think that shows right there that this is a person who can move on LGBTQ issues, significant movement on those. Um, so again, since he was first elected, and I've seen him since he was first elected, you know, the growth is phenomenal. Look at the first caucus meeting he had where he did appoint Guy as leader in the House. That's and the whole caucus behind him, I just think that regard, you know, leadership campaigns, you pick your candidate and you go and campaign your hardest. But at the end, uh, people all belong to the same party. And they once you have a leader, you want that leader to do well. So I think whoever you supported, there's excitement. Uh, people feel that the party's off on a new foot. Yeah. And, and I think there's tremendous energy now. Well, and I, would, I mean, the, the comparison I would make is to Jack's, Jack Layton's leadership victory uh, in, uh, you know, just over a decade ago, almost 15 years ago. Well, Jack had been in and politics for, for 25 years. Yeah, he before had, but he there's, there's, there's some really interesting parallels, right? Almost exactly the same percentage win on the first ballot. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of his first, uh, you know, Jack's first act was to turn to Bill Blakey and ask him to be his parliamentary leader uh, because he didn't have a seat in the House at the time. Mm -hmm. Jagmeet turned to Guy Caron. Uh, both stood accused, uh, you know, you, you just said it a minute ago, I mean, both stood accused uh, uh, during the campaign of being uh, outsiders, of being, you know, all flash and no substance. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Jack proved all of that wrong. And, uh, you know, both have a very, very interesting, similar positive energy. Not bad so to be I, underestimated in politics. Not either. bad. And I, and I both, both actually, uh, at the end of the day, organizers. So the, the <laughs> same amount of, you know, Jack spent, and this is an underrated aspect of his leadership, Jack spent as much time worrying about the nuts and bolts of uh, organizing across the country as he did about, you know, uh, you know presenting to the outside world. Jagmeet has that similar, clearly from, from his convincing win, that similar attention to detail in terms of party building. Mm -hmm. Let me read this here. This, uh, okay, you want to bring this up? Is this, yeah, here we go, Sheldon, let's do this. I did not think we were that kind of people, one new Democrat had told me in the hours after Tom Mulcair's leadership had been disposed of. Angus's results suggest that New Democrats are indeed that kind of people. Jack Layton spent his tenure urging New Democrats to set their sights on forming a government. In the pursuit of power, they are no less cold-blooded than their conservative and liberal counterparts. Written by no less than Chantal Hébert in the Toronto Star. Uh, okay, what do we think? I mean, they want to win. What party doesn't want to win? And well, I the think... NDP didn't care about winning for a very long time. They were happy to be the conscience of Parliament and nudge the other parties in the right direction, but in their view. But then they got the orange wave taste, taste of glory, and they didn't want to let it go. I, I think there's a, there's I a agree contradiction with yeah, yeah. Between, no? No. between principles and winning. I mean, obviously, you cannot put your policies into place unless you win. Otherwise, you're, you're shouting at the government all the time. So, I mean, and, and there shouldn't be any contradiction between winning and, and policies. And I, so, it's, uh, uh, just as you said, it's really important to have that or organizational acumen. It's really important. And to be on the ground, to, to search out great candidates and convince them to run, which is what Jack did uh, excellently well. Um, and, and yeah, it, it shows know. we want to win, like the NDP yeah. wants to win, but we're also not afraid to take a risk. I mean, Jagmeet is, is, is a risk in terms of he's not elected as an MP. He is the first person from a racialized community who is the leader of a national party. But I think it's a smart risk. It's, it's an exciting risk. Calculated. But I think her point is, Rick, and I'll get you to address this. I think her point is New Democrats have always seen themselves as somehow different from the other two mainline yeah. parties over yeah. the years. You know, we, we don't practice regicide is the you know, yeah. standard line. But actually, you know, you did. You, you, you only gave your last leader one kick at it and then tossed him aside. Yeah. And, uh, you know, 
Yeah, May I don't think, to, to be honest with you, I don't think the media understands the NDP that well, mm -hmm. to be really honest with you, with you being the obvious exception. Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, you know, but, but I mean, the NDP hasn't mattered that much mm -hmm. at a national level until recently. And so I think, I think Chantel's frame, framing is wrong there. I mean, you, in every party, you have, uh, you have people who are more interested in issues than, than the mechanics of winning. That's not, that's not new. Uh, certainly, it's a bit variable in the NDP because uh, in some provinces uh, there's a two-party system, and like in BC, where the NDP is quite used to forming government. Saskatchewan the same, Manitoba the same. Here in Ontario, somewhat different. So, you know, certainly there are different uh, strains of New Democrats. Mm -hmm. But I think at the end of the day, most New Democrats w w would agree with the fact that this country is better when the NDP does best, and and. You know, the NDP doing best is, 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 is best expressed through a government, right? The, and, you know, I, I work for Ed Broadbent for a living, so you know, I'm a bit biased in this respect. I but, was going to uh, say, I can imagine there's a lot of people out there who actually don't think that the country does better yeah. when the NDP does best. Well, they might you know, be called conservatives. Yes, <laughs> yes. But, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the, the leaps that this country has made in terms of uh, social policy that matters have happened when the NDP federally has been strong. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, uh, I think certainly under a Jagmeet Singh leadership, you're not going to find any New Democrats squawking about, uh, you know, being inadequately ambitious on issues or this or that. I think I think he can thread that needle. Let's see if we can better understand what his election means in terms of the ideological direction the party is going to take. And we've heard it here already. You know, Sherry DeNovo wants a New Democratic Party that is, you know, unambiguously left-wing, in the style of a Bernie Sanders, of a Jeremy Corbyn. And I think there's obviously been a lot of uh, concern inside the party that under Thomas Mulcair it was becoming a much more pragmatic, centrist, uh, very ambiguously social democratic party. Mm -hmm. Singh's election means what? I think a democratic socialist party is a great goal. I think it's a great goal the NDP should strive for. I think definitely going back to the CCF roots is something that's admirable. However, before I think the party does this dramatic shift to the left, it needs to bring young Canadians and racialized Canadians into the fold. I think being a, um, a socialist democratic party is a good ground in order for people to feel that social democracy is an accessible way to understand politics, in order for people to be involved in the political process. I think going too hard left at this moment will alienate a good set of the Canadian population. Interesting. Peggy, what do you say? Well, what I say is I think there's a lot of people who are disaffected from mainstream politics and they would add uh, the NDP in, in that mainstream frame. And uh, I think they're looking for authenticity. They're looking for um, a political organization that brings in real voices. And I think especially for young people right now, they're experiencing a huge amount of inequality. Um, whether it's racial inequality, economic inequality, environmental, possibly catastrophe, and they hear uh, Jagmeet Singh reflecting those issues, speaking their language. But does his, does his election portend a move further to the left to where Sherry DeNovo, for example, would like to see the NDP go? Well, I think these are all issues that Sherry's been raising, that I've been raising. I think they're it, it's about speaking an authentic language that includes people. And I agree with Brittany that, you know, it's, it's one thing if you use a lot of um, jargon, jargon old-style mm -hmm. jargon, I think it's very alienating to, to a lot of people. So using a contemporary language that is inclusive and brings people in and articulates the very real day-to-day -day issues that, are, that people are facing. You can call it, you can say it's left-wing, I believe it is left-wing mm -hmm. because it's actually addressing the social and economic and environmental issues that people are facing. Adia, what's your view? People care that you care about the issues that affect them. And millennials and the younger generations are facing a very different set of problems and pictures than uh, the older generation. And I think that the MB NDP just has more space to care about these issues than a lot of the, than the other two major parties do. But Rick, for those who are looking for a genuine, definitive signal, yeah. is this the party of Saunders, of Corbyn? Is this a party of unambiguous social democracy, of Ed Broadbent? Do they yeah. have that now in Jagmeet Singh? 
I, I don't I don't think that that I think we have a tendency as Canadians to try to import these re realities from elsewhere. I mean, I don't like making the comparison to the U.S. with with Sanders or to the U.K. with Corbyn. I don't think that's our reality here. Okay, how about let's and, do a Canadian and, example? Is is, yeah. is he consistent with Tommy Douglas? Sure. Is he consistent with he is Ed fully, Broadbent, absolutely. David he Lewis? Is, I think I think Jagmeet is fully and and I love that quote from his 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 victory speech where he says, "From Tommy yeah. to Jagmeet." Uh, he is fully in the trajectory of, uh, of the NDP, which at the, which at the end of the day uh, is the party of social progress in this country. And, and he talked about some things in this, in this campaign in, in an eloquent way, in a rooted way, that I haven't heard before in, uh, in a political campaign. I mean, he, he talk, I mean his, his racial j uh, justice uh, platform is, is unbelievable. Like, it is detailed and it is, uh, it is uh, fantastic. And I haven't heard that talked about in a political campaign in the same way before. The guy is a geek. I mean, as one, one other example, I mean, he's, he's a total geek when it comes to uh, uh, online issues. I mean, he's a lawyer, so that's partially where it comes from. But he's also quite concerned, uh, you know, as a millennial, about sort of online privacy, uh, C51, and, and the life that people lead online. And he, has a, he is very eloquent in these issues in a way that I haven't heard others well, that, being eloquent. That's and I, was, I don't know if that's left or right. Well, okay, but, uh, but I, I do think that people care about that. I was that. going to follow up on that yeah. with you, Sherry, because, uh, you know, I, I don't think there's any question that the guy knows his stuff when it comes to social justice issues. Does he know about tax policy? Does he know about post secondary education policy? Does he know about a whole host of you know, a thousand different issues that every leader really needs to know a little something about. Well, there's nothing more Tommy or J.S. Woodsworth than uh, talking about free uh, post-secondary tuition or uh, universal pharmacare or universal child care. Uh, these are core democratic socialist issues. These are principles of the party. Jugmeat hasn't varied from that. I mean, that's, these, are, these are who we are. Um, and, you know, I mean, even conservatives love Medicare, Steve. Um, you know, and me defend Defended it south of the border, and I was there when we did. Uh, so, I mean, these are core issues that have always defined us uh, as who we are, and 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 certainly th these are important to millennials. I mean, free tuition, even forgiveness on student debt. These again, core issues uh, that define us. Jugmeet knows that he's not going to veer from that. Mm -hmm. I think what's really important to recognize here is that, yes, he's definitely running a left party, absolutely. But when we're comparing if he's left enough, what are we really saying? He has a really intensive, well thorough criminal justice platform, as Rick had mentioned. He has called for the decriminalization of drugs across um, a whole, decriminalization yeah. of sex work. So why are those really progressive policies that have never really been spoken about within the NDP before considered as being true left? Right? When we're talking about true left, it's really focusing on certain policies and not others. And I think we really need to have a more comprehensive understanding of what it means to be a left party in the 21st century within a modern day diverse Canadian society. Okay, let's finish up on this in our remaining moments here. And that is, I, if I heard this once, I've heard it a thousand times from New, New Democrats over the last several months. Jugmeet Singh is going to be Justin Trudeau's biggest nightmare because he's now poaching on a lot of the same turf for a lot of the same voters on a lot of the same issues that the current Prime Minister of Canada did. This can go one of many ways here, right? Like Trudeau could eat him for lunch, or maybe it sings to take from Trudeau. I don't know. What do you think? Well, you know, I think what we saw in the last federal election, and believe me, I saw it up close and personal, was that the Liberals campaigned on many NDP uh, principles that then have tended to kind of fritter away while they're in office. So they have left the NDP a huge amount of space. Regardless of who was elected leader, there was that space. But uh, is uh, Jagmeet Singh someone who can reach out to young people, to people from racialized communities, to millennials, to, um, to a broad spectrum of people across this country? Is he charming, warm? Is he an organizer? Is he smart? Uh, yes. How about in rural Saskatchewan, where the NDP used to be so strong and now really isn't? You know, I believe people are people. And, you know, if you come, whether you're from an urban or a rural community, I think most Canadians are fair-minded. They, they want a fair deal for them and their families. They, they want respect for the hard work they do. And I think we'll see in the Saguenay-Lac-Saint-Jean region that 
Jagmeet will connect with people. You know, there's a great video when he first began to run. It's on YouTube, and, and I love this. There's with a the picture kid? of him. He's, he's riding his bicycle oh. in a neighborhood in Brampton, and he's riding around. There's just music. There's no words. And then you see a couple of kids come on their bikes and a few more kids. And pretty soon he's got this army of people riding with him on his bicycle, on their bikes with him. And I, I, I feel like that is his potential, hmm. is to, to organize and relate to people, whatever their background. Let me ask Sherry about the Pied Piper from Brampton. What do you think? <laughs> well, uh, absolutely. I mean, here's the thing. The Liberals campaigned on the left, and they govern on the right. And that's what uh, Trudeau has done. So we're still selling arms to I'm Saudi not... Arabia, <laughs> where, where, where he's, he's shilling for, for, for pipelines. I mean, come on. This is not... Electoral reform. Uh, and, and yet the electoral I reform. The, I think that, the tax reform changes that proposed went, by Morneau are, are um, on small business are not, not what you call we, governing we from the left. Um, yeah, but sure. that's one among many of his moves, Steve. So I think what you've got with Jugmead is you've got somebody who's going to campaign on the left and govern on the left. That's what Canadians want, is somebody who promises and carries through on their promises. I mean, this is the you know 101 of electoral politics. Don't promise something and then not deliver. Trudeau has not delivered. Jugmead will. I think that's going to be oh, a sorry. challenge mm -hmm. in that the NDP hasn't held office, and so we... It's federally. Un federally, yes, sorry. And so we are untested as to whether or not you're going to campaign on the left and and stay on the left. You would think the NDP of all parties would actually follow through on that promise, but it's, Jagmeet's going to have to show that they're going to be able to do so. But I think, I think that's the major challenge. challenge. Just a little bit is the fact that because the NDP is primarily a principled party that runs off principles as opposed to the Liberals, they more kind of reflect what the general population would, would want, is that they will be better or more inclined to implement their actions and their, their actual policies than the liberals were because they don't have a certain sect of their population or base that are pushing maybe for a more right agenda or pushing for, let's say, pipelines, et cetera, because we're not looking to appeal to the broader base of Canadians, but we're looking to implement a progressive agenda. So I think that's what's really important in terms of assessing whether the NDP can actually implement their, I, their policies. I've I, I got to push back on that. I'm okay. sorry. I'm going to push back on that. <laughs> When Jack Layton defeated the Paul Martin government, you know, he, for I a principle... the Canadians defeated the for, Paul Well, Martin. hang on. No, he, he <laughs> defeated them in the House of Commons. When he defeated the minority government in the House of Commons, national daycare went out the window. And so did Kelowna, and so did one other thing, starting with a K that oh, I can't... Oh, come on. But that, that, no, no, hang on, hang on. Yeah, and, those and, were and deathbed conversions and, and the, on the part and the, of, of and a the, tired old government. And why should, why should the NDP... Where that, and why did the NDP... Why didn't the Liberals do that five, ten years before? The... In 2015, so to answer your question, in 2015, the ballot question for non-conservative voters in this country was how best to get rid of Stephen Harper. Uh, and Justin Trudeau made a more convincing case uh, that he could do that than, uh, than the NDP did. The ballot, we don't know what the ballot question will be in 2019, but it's certainly uh, not, you don't get to do that uh, Stephen Harper repeat again. Uh, so it's going to be a competitive three-way race in 2019. Uh, and uh, the NDP is going to do very well. I was just pushing back on the notion that I know New Democrats love to think of themselves as being the only principled party in that yeah. federal House of Commons, yeah. but sometimes they don't act that way. That's all I was trying to say. And by pulling, you know, by de by defeating by defeating a government yeah. with with a lot of the things that you guys wanted. And in its place, getting a government that you really couldn't stand. Sounds like Kathleen but wins pre-election. Well, <laughs> isn't, isn't that the ultimate, you know, blaming, you know, blaming them? Why should the NDP wear the, the failures of the Paul Martin government? Surely, surely the Liberals, who had been in power for like 12 years by then, uh, surely the Liberals should wear their own lack Absolutely. of success in that regard. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Can I add one last Please. thing in terms of your comparison between Trudeau and, and Singh? I think what's interesting is when it does come to 2019, depending on what the ballot question would be, is that if you're gonna, if this is gonna be a battle of the progressives, Jagmeet has the lived experience of many of the progressive policies that he's championing. Mm -hmm. So it might be a matter of fact of who are Canadians gonna trust when it comes to implementing these policies. We saw in the Vice Town Hall when Trudeau was talking about the marijuana legalization um, bill and the fact that he willingly told the Canadian population that his brother got off of a marijuana charge because they had the connections in government. Mm -hmm. And that blind spot is there when it comes to many of these social justice reforms or many of the progressive policies that he wants to implement. And given the fact that this new bill has skipped over decriminalization of, of, um, of 
marijuana users for personal possession is a huge blind spot that Trudeau wears. So I think it may come down to who has the lived experience, who do you trust more to kind of implement these policies. In our last minute, let me go with you on this, Rick, and you can disagree with me again if you want here. And, and that is... Never. <laughs> one of the things we also saw in the, you know, in the election where the NDP did extremely well, became the official opposition, mm -hmm. was that 2011? 2011. Um, one of the things, one of the features of that election was they did so well, they took a lot of votes from liberals, which enabled the conservatives to come up the middle, mm -hmm. and you got a Stephen Harper majority government as a result. Yeah. And I wonder if there's a part of you that's not just a little bit worried that Jagmeet Singh could be so successful, he could put the conservatives back in power. And those liberals yeah. should all vote NDP and put yes. an NDP government in place. <laughs> what, what you described is exactly the reason we need a proportional system in this country, like no, the rest yeah. of the industrialized which world. Which, which, the, which your so party thank, didn't insist on you, when they had a chance in, with the minority parliament in 2004. The, N the NDP has been insisting on that for years, and uh, you know, God willing, we're going to see that materialize in British Columbia <laughs> yes. in a few months. So the, the fight goes on. God, as it did on this program, but in a very civilized way. <laughs> Can I thank you all for coming on the program thank tonight? You. Who do we want to thank first, Mr. Director? Okay, let's, let, let's thank them. for Peggy Nash, the former member for Parkdale High Park. She's at Ryerson nowadays. Uh, Hadia Rodrigue, we can listen to you on the Canada Lands Common podcast, which is uh, really great that you co-host with uh, Ashley Chinatti. I do. Who has been and a guest Ryan on this McMahon. program, and, and uh, we're delighted that you were able to be with us today. And on the other side of the table, Sherry DeNovo, the former, the soon-to-be former member of Parkdale High Park, Rick Smith from the Broadband Institute, Brittany, Andrew, Amofa, public <laughs> affairs commentator. And uh, let me just say, while thanking all of you, we're not quite done yet, because I want you to stick around. Because I understand that because you're leaving Queen's Park at the end of the year, we should probably have a chat about what you've done in the last decade or more of your life at the uh, Pink Palace, okay? Of two. Okay, Sherry, stick around. And thanks to everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.